Last Friday, October 23rd, Judge Emmett Sullivan in the Michael Flynn judicial saga ordered the Department of Justice to confirm the authenticity of evidence they filed in support of their motion to dismiss the charges against Michael Flynn. And you know what happened yesterday? The Department of Justice confirmed the authenticity of those documents and more. What did you think was going to happen, Sullivan? <laughs> Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and it's time for another update in the Michael Flynn never-ending judicial saga. I did a vlog on Sunday about a Friday court order from Judge Emmett Sullivan ordering the Department of Justice to confirm the authenticity that the evidence filed in support of their motion to dismiss the charges against Michael Flynn were true and correct. I anxiously awaited, anxiously, anxious, I can't say the word, I anxiously awaited over the weekend to see what the Department of Justice would do. Would they fail to confirm the authenticity of the documentation under penalty of perjury, or would they do exactly what they did, confirm that the documents are true and correct, and proceed to strengthen their case? No 30,000 foot overview of the procedure or context. If you need a refresher, just go and watch my vlog from Sunday. I'll link it right here. Suffice only to say that in his order, Judge Emmett Sullivan referred to the evidence submitted by the Department of Justice as altered three times in the court order. And in what manner was that evidence altered? You should be asking yourself, and if you're asking yourself that question, good question. It was altered in that the photocopy of Peter Stroke and Andy McCabe's notes apparently were photocopied with a little sticky note indicating the rough time frame of the elements of that note. But when you are a hammer, anything sticking up looks like a nail, or as my father always used to say when we were golfing, when you're looking for a golf ball in the woods, anything that is white is going to draw your attention. And that's because I hit a lot of golf balls into the woods. Now, we may or may not be dealing with a judge who is acting like something of a hammer just looking for nails, or someone who's lost a golf ball looking for anything in the woods, but the judge wants the Department of Justice to confirm that the documents they have filed that were altered with that sticky note that got photocopied with them are in fact true and correct. And the Department of Justice in fact filed their response yesterday. The United States of America, by and through its attorney, the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia, hereby files with the court its response to the court's minute order of October 23, 2020. By that minute order, the court directed the government to file by no later than October 26, 2020, a declaration pursuant to penalty of perjury under 28 U.S.C. section 1746 that the 14 exhibits attached to its motion to dismiss and supplement are true and correct copies. The court extended this order to documents produced by the government in discovery, which were subsequently filed by the defendant as exhibits in support of the defendant's supplemental filings. Just a small parenthesis here to explain some terminology that might not be too familiar to anyone who's not a lawyer. Depositions, discoveries, examinations, or when you sit down and examine a witness, and in the context of discoveries, you can file or ask for the communication of certain documents that you can then file later on in your pleadings. That's one of the reasons why they're called discoveries, in that you can discover things in these examinations, depositions, discoveries, that you might want to file in support of your pleadings, which you can then choose to do, or you might discover things Things that are useless and disregard. What this is saying here is that in the context of discoveries, the government communicate. Oh, who's that? How's it going? The government communicated certain documentation that Michael Flynn then filed in his supplemental filings in the court record. And the judge's order to confirm that the documents were true and correct extended to those documents communicated by the government during the depositions that were subsequently filed by Michael Flynn, or his attorneys, you know what I mean. With respect to both categories, the court ordered the government to identify each, quote, exhibit and, quote, discovery document by, quote, name, date, and author, end quote. Lastly, the court ordered the government to, quote, provide transcriptions of all handwritten notes contained in in the exhibits, end quote. Now, in my last vlog, one of the reasons for which I hypothesized that the judge might actually be asking the government to confirm that the exhibits are in fact true and correct copies is that he actually has a doubt on the legitimacy, on the authenticity of the underlying document itself. Some people might call that a little excessive, potentially conspiratorial, while others might say the judge is just doing a darn good job verifying all of the information in the file. From what I understand, ordinarily a judge will accept a government's filing as authentic, failing proof to the contrary. In this case, the judge thinks he has some proof to the contrary, that being the altered sticky note on the documents, so he is asking the government to verify and confirm all of their filings. Some of you might be asking yourselves, what did the judge think was going to happen? Did he think the Department of Justice was actually going to fail to confirm that the exhibits were in fact true and correct, and that this case would be blown wide open? Who knows? But predictably, what happened is that the Department of Justice is in fact confirming that all of the documents are in fact true and correct, but they go on to strengthen their case even more. And let's see how. 
Government exhibits. There have been no material alterations made to any of the 14 government exhibits filed in support of the motion to dismiss and the supplement to the motion to dismiss. Several of the documents contain routine redactions made by the FBI to protect classified information and or law enforcement sensitive information and or made to comply with the local rule to remove Privacy Act information. In compliance with the court's order, the government has created a chart attached here to as exhibit A that identifies the name, date, and author of each of the 14 government exhibits. I will include a link to this filing in the pinned comments so that you can go and read it for yourselves if you are so inclined, but in their filing the government goes on to respond as follows. The government exhibits described in Exhibit A are authenticated as follows. A1. John Brown, Executive Assistant Director of the National Security Branch of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, has declared under penalty of perjury to the best of his knowledge and based on the information provided to him that all government exhibits described in Exhibit A with the exception of those described in paragraphs A2 and A3 are true and correct copies of documents and records including copies copies of select pages of larger records maintained by the FBI pursuant to the applicable records retention policy. Now, to the extent that I have this reflex, I take for granted that there are going to be a great many other people out there who have the same reflex, but whenever I see the words to the best of his knowledge, I immediately get skeptical, but I think it's pretty clear in this context why such terminology would be used when, I don't know, people are out looking for people who might misremember things in order to charge them with perjury. The words to the best of his knowledge are sort of like perjury protectors in a world where people might go around looking for perjury in that if the person misremembers something or fails to identify something that they forgot, they won't be held in perjury. A2. One of the government exhibits is a summary chart of electronic communications by attorneys at the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office and the Eastern District of Missouri U.S. Attorney's Office to capture relevant electronic communications involving multiple FBI personnel while excluding irrelevant information and excess metadata. For this government exhibit, AUSA Sailor Fleming has declared under penalty of perjury, to the best of her knowledge, that, that this government exhibit it truly and correctly reflects excerpts from documents and records maintained by the FBI pursuant to the applicable records retention policy and provided to the EDM DC USAO for review. A3. One of the government exhibits is a report of the interview of Special Agent William Barnett. Keith Cohn, a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, has declared under penalty of perjury, to the best of his knowledge, and based on the information provided to him, that this exhibit is a true and correct copy of the report of that interview. And it goes on with the discovery documents, and on, and on, and on. The government then goes on to explain that there are certain documents that they are not confirming to be true or correct because they are not relying on those documents in support of their motion to dismiss or supplemental filings. And those documents, there's some text messages between Peter Stroke and Lisa Page. The government then goes on to address the request from the court for the transcription of certain handwritten notes, and thank goodness the judge asked for this because now they are much easier for the rest of the world to read. Transcripts of handwritten notes. The court has additionally ordered the government to provide transcriptions of all handwritten notes contained within the government exhibits and the discovery documents. The government has complied to the best of its abilities. See exhibits F through N. Where possible, the government has provided copies of these notes and the resulting transcripts to the author or their attorneys for review. We will get into the the transcripts of some of those handwritten notes in a bit, but just to get to the end, and if you want to know what a proper mea culpa looks like, this is what a proper mea culpa looks like. And in order to produce full mea culpa effect, I am going to add some overlay of some mea culpa music. The government acknowledges its obligation to produce true and accurate copies of documents. The government has fully admitted its administrative error with respect to the failure to remove three reviewer sticky notes containing estimated date notations affixed to three pages of undated notes, two belonging to to former Deputy Assistant Director Peter Stroke and one page belonging to former Deputy Director Andrew McCabe prior to their disclosure. These dates were derived from surrounding pages dates in order to aid secondary reviewers. These three sticky notes were inadvertently not removed when the relevant documents were scanned by the FBI for production in discovery. The government reiterates, however, that the content of those exhibits was not altered in any way as confirmed by attorneys for both former FBI employees. In conclusion, the government writes as follows. The government respectfully submits this response and declares under penalty of perjury that the government exhibits and discovery documents are true and correct and correctly identified and have been faithfully transcribed. And because no court filing is fully complete until there's a judicial stinger inserted therein, the judicial stinger of this filing. Consistent with the en banc DC Circuit statement, quote, we trust and expect the district court to proceed with appropriate dispatch, end quote. The government respectfully submits that the court should immediately grant the unopposed motion to dismiss the criminal information with prejudice. Respectfully submitted. All right, before we go over some of the exhibits, just to illustrate how exactly the government has taken the opportunity to make their case even stronger, I'm going to move the car because the lighting is getting a little harsh. Yes. 
I shall get the shade of the street. Nope, too far. Here in Exhibit A, we have the government documents that were relied on in support of their motion to dismiss, and the authentication category in the far right column, true and correct copy of document or record maintained by the FBI pursuant to the applicable records retention policy. Then we have the unclassified declaration of John Brown, the executive assistant director of the National Security Branch of the FBI, declaration of Sailor Fleming, Assistant United States Attorney in the Eastern District of Missouri. Then we get into the transcription of the Deputy Assistant Director Peter Stroke's handwritten notes and why the judge would want these to be even clear for public consumption. That is between the judge and the rest of the world. Transcription of notes of DAD Peter Stroke. Undated, but likely 1 5 2017. Note that counsel for Stroke, Atan Goldman, reported to the DC USAO on 10 23 2020 that these notes were taken by his client at an FBI meeting and that they reflected Director James Comey's account of a meeting that had taken place earlier on the day of 1 5 2017 at the White House. NSA DAG, which I think and hope means National Security Advisor, Deputy Attorney General. General Flynn cuts other countries. D D A G team found on unclass. V P which means vice president. Quote Logan Act. End quote. P which means president. These are unusual times. V P I've been told on the Intel Committee for ten years and I never. P make sure you look at things plus have the right people on it. P is there anything I shouldn't be telling transition team? D Flynn to Kisliak calls but appear legit. UI, Happy New Year, yeah right. Here now we have a transcript of a meeting that occurred in the White House with the President and the Vice President talking about what to do with Michael Flynn in 2017 after Trump has been elected during the transition from one presidency to the next. Notwithstanding the fact that Biden said he apparently knew nothing of the situation. I do want to ask you about Michael Flynn, the former National Security Advisor to President Trump and the move by the Justice Department last week to dismiss the case against him for lying to the FBI. The president said yesterday that that move is justified because President Obama targeted Flynn. He called it, quote, the biggest political crime in U.S. history. Your former Senate colleague, Charles Grassley, has added that Flynn was entrapped and asked on the Senate floor, what did Obama and Biden know? When did they know it? So what did you know about those moves to investigate uh, Michael Flynn? And was there anything improper done? I know nothing about those moves to investigate Michael Flynn, number one. Number two, this is all about diversion. I do want to press that. You say you didn't know anything about it, but you were reported to be at a January 5th, 2017 meeting where you and the president were briefed on the FBI's plan to question Michael, Michael Flynn over those uh, conversations he had with the uh, Russian ambassador Kislyak. Now, I thought you asked me whether or not I had anything to do with him being prosecuted. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I was aware that there was that, there, that they asked for an investigation, but that's all I know about it. And I don't think anything else. Look. And to break out a meme I haven't used in a while. But wait, there's more. We now have a transcription of the notes of the FBI OGC attorney, which I think and hope means the Office of General Counsel. 12517, Razor DOG NSD at ODAG. It's a lot of letters. Tolls, did he talk to admin first? Logan Act, no reasonable prosecutor, uphill battle, other transition teams, first time to use it. And it goes on and you can read for your own personal edification. From these freshly and cleanly transcribed notes, it would seem that the attorney at the FBI OGC was of the opinion that no no reasonable prosecutor would bring charges under the Logan Act against Michael Flynn. It would be an uphill battle and the first time to use that act. Absolutely incredible information that might have not been brought to the attention of a great many people but for Judge Sullivan's orders and thanks to his order it is now a lot easier for everyone to read. And to use the same meme twice in one vlog? But wait, there's more! Notes of Assistant Director of Counterintelligence E. W. Prystap, dated 1-24-2017. DD, redacted. We have a case on Flynn plus Russians. Our goal is to resolve case. Our goal is to determine if Mike Flynn is going to tell the truth at his relationship with Russians. Can quote, redacted? Shouldn't. Redacted. Afterwards. Interview. I agreed yesterday that we shouldn't show Flynn redacted if he didn't admit. I thought at it last night, plus I believe we should rethink this. What's our goal? Truth, admission, or to get him to lie so we can prosecute him or get him fired? We regularly show subjects evidence with the goal of getting them to admit their wrongdoing. I don't see how getting someone to admit their wrongdoing is going easy on him. If we get him to admit breaking the Logan Act, give facts to DOJ and have them decide. Or if he initially lies, then we present him redacted. 
plus he admits it, document for DOJ, plus let them decide how to address it. If we're seeing as playing games, White House will be furious. Protect our institutions by not playing games. Bear in mind that this is all the internal discussion about that last meeting they had with Michael Flynn in which they did what they did, resulting in the situation we have been documenting for a while now. This is information that was withheld from Michael Flynn, and it's going to be up to you after having seen all of this to determine whether or not you think they were in fact playing games, whether they were after the truth, or whether they were just after getting Michael Flynn to lie so they could prosecute him or get him fired. But setting aside those matters of opinion, these are the facts, they are much easier to read, and they are back in the public limelight thanks to Judge Sullivan's court order. All right, so that is the latest update, and with any luck, there will be no further updates until Judge Emmett Sullivan adjudicates on the Department of Justice's motion to dismiss with dispatch as per the orders of the D.C. Court of Appeal. Will he grant the motion? Will he dismiss the motion? Will he order yet another inquiry into something for further delays pending the upcoming elections? Who knows? Stay tuned for the next episode of this never-ending vlog. And with that said, if you like my videos and like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Feed me all! If you want to support the channel, all of the support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar, YouTube membership. We've got merch. But more important than any of that, take care of yourselves. Check in on friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Boom.